So we've made our last stop in Anchorage. Stayed again with awesome locals, Chris, Mary Ann, their family. Just, oh my God, so, they're so gracious insanely awesome host. You want to make friends with your locals. You want to find out where to eat, what to do, and then sometimes it works out where you can stay in a driveway in Alaska. That's especially awesome because it's tough to make repairs. A lot of your place is going to be backlogged because everybody's up here in Alaska at the same time. Uh, it is your home, so it's tough if you got to leave it for a certain amount of time while they're working on it. Luckily, Chris has a shop up here as far as welding and electrical and all kinds of things. So when we were here last time, <laughs> we put in the jack. This time we came in, he helped me fix two pr tower pressure monitor sensors. Of course, you guys knew about my tail light, um, which I have been working on, but it's not as simple as swapping out a bulb. This is like a custom LED panel, but we were finally able to find somebody who had this drop-in replacement. I've still got to get three more of these. I'm just going to replace them all just in case those are going out too. Corey and Jesse and their kids from Finding Our Someday are with us too, and uh, he helped Corey with his axles. As far as etiquette with driveway surfing, uh, mooch docking, different ways of calling it. Uh, of course, it's one thing if you're doing it with family. There's probably still some etiquette there on how long you stay and what you do. But in general, if you're doing something like Boondockers Welcome, Harvest Host, or just a local you've met, uh, you don't want to overstay your welcome. You know, one or two nights, uh, we, we buy them a gift if you can. Now, it's been a little different circumstance. We've stayed here a couple different nights, three different times, because we kind of went back and forth to Anchorage. Uh, but we didn't bring that up. I mean, they asked us, hey, if, if you want it, they knew where we were going. They're like, hey, if you want to come back, just please come back. We love having you. And so we did. We bought him a gift um, just to show how much we appreciate them letting us come here. He tightened your there. bearings. Was that supposed to be done every, what, 3,000? First 3,000 or first 6,000 when you get an RV? That's or? what he said. Was 3, yeah, 000. but they never told you that, right? Nobody well, maybe it's in the manual somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> Probably was. And these inside tires on the rear axle were wearing on both sides. So we put new tires on it. And Grand Design is going to uh, warranty axles and tires for us, but we were staying here with Chris and he said, well, I had that same issue. It's probably your bearings not seated properly. So yesterday we took these off and we, we tightened them down and then backed it off. So we reseated the bearings. There was quite a bit of play in there and uh, hopefully that takes care of the issue. I guess you're supposed to do that every, he said, 3,000 miles. And I've, oh my never, goodness. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> so. But it makes sense because these two had like quite a bit of play in them which yeah. a, a bearing shouldn't have any play and so when you've got that play and you get the weight when the weight settles on the trailer it pushes those tires out just a little bit which is causing the wear on the inside right is that kind of what's going on with the bearings that's, if, if they're loose if they have that play in them. that's what he was saying yeah so so keep an eye i mean if nothing else at least watch the tread on your tire and if you got something going on with the tread it could be a bad axle up here for sure but it could also just be something like that So not ideal to be next to the road on this little pull-off, but it's free and we got a view of Madagascar Glacier from the outside and from the inside. So pretty sweet. This is about the halfway point of Valdez. You want to read that book? Yeah. You like to read, don't you? Yeah, this is Pete the cat. Pete is on a bug safari. He and his friends are looking for bugs. How many bugs can they find? Did yeah. you get some new boots? How many pairs have you had? That's your, not your first, not your second, not your third, but your what? fourth pair. Those are wow. nice and shiny. Yeah, look how shiny these are compared to your other ones. <laughs> Just in one day, you've gotten them pretty dirty. But... <laughs> we heard Croc was, what's the deal with Croc? Yeah, I've seen news reports that they're closing their factory, so. I don't know. Maybe it's a temporary thing. Hopefully not permanent. I don't know. I don't know what we we're gonna do. We don't stockpile anything, but we might get a few, get a few sizes of next step boots. If something's yeah, if something's happening and they're not making them anymore. Let me get this step. So I do like this when Airstream's done. You can have the step just partially out like this with one, if you're already kind of low to the ground like this. All right, you're good. And then we've tried to create a barrier. Kind of right here for our kid. Got pretty close to the bikes. Oh. I don't know about that traffic, but see how this goes. Maybe it'll calm down later tonight. Yeah, caravanning, finding our someday. There's a state recreation area we were gonna camp at, but it was like 20 bucks to stay in the parking lot and did not have a great view. <laughs> this has got the great view and it's free. Now in Alaska, 
Basically, if there's a pullout like this, which is obviously created by the government, the state, whatever, and there's no signs that say you can't camp here, um, you're good to go. You can stay here, so that's cool. <laughs> Somewhat level. Now that we're a little bit higher off the ground, just swing this around, pop it down, we got our second step. That's what like 50 plus years of engineering with one company building close to the same thing over and over and over, you get stuff like that. Cool, love it. So I can't say enough about how awesome meeting locals is and how important of an experience that is, especially for something like Alaska. I mean, you can randomly meet locals at Walmart or RV events, you know, maybe places like that, but if you've already sort of broken the ice with some online stuff, I think it makes it easier. So case in point, uh, finding our someday that we're with, you know, Corey's just getting started with his YouTube channel. Um, he has Instagram, but for the most part, I mean, they've probably spent just as much, if not more time with locals in, uh, I know, Wyoming and then Alaska. It's just through people they meet. Um, they just make these connections and then sometimes they know a local that knows a local or knows somebody or there's lots of different ways to meet people. Uh, they stayed on a farm in Wyoming and then like helped with a ranch. I think they did that like a week or two. They asked them to stay there. And you know, if meeting people and doing the whole local thing isn't really what you want to do, you, know, you can do your own thing. It's not like you have to do that as RVing, but we did our own thing the first year and it was a really lonely year. And it's just been really awesome as time's gone on to make these connections. Because what happens is the longer you're on the road, you get to like reconnect with people you already met with. And that's when it's really cool. When you meet one person in Virginia and then you meet them again in Montana and then maybe you run into them in, in Alaska. And it's, it's a big country, it's a big continent. It's not that big when you're RVing because you're going to a lot of the same places a lot of the time. Mr. Corey's gonna run the lights. Bam, 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 bam. Ready for the dip. Bam, Woo! Bam. Yes! Bum, bum, bum. I wanna see some hammer time. Oh. His, I don't know about flashlight tagging yeah, yeah. Yep. It's one of those uh, kind of like a hub kind of cities. The road from Anchorage to here, uh, not great. Not as good as what we experienced around Anchorage or to Homer or to Seward, but not terrible. Yeah, I don't know, one to 10, like Taylor Highway around Chicken being like a, like a two. <laughs> this would be like a six or seven, something like that. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know about the scale. Something like that. So one thing I absolutely love about our Airstream, or it may be true for just like travel trailers in the 30 foot range period, I don't know, but um, the tail whip is not bad. Well, we decide yours is like six or eight feet longer than mine. So your yeah. turn, it's a lot harder for you to make your turns. Yeah, too, I like so. turn <laughs> eventually. So this, the point from here to your front axle determines how wide you got to make your turns. And then from your rear axle to the rear tip is like your tail whip. We've got, I don't know, maybe eight feet tail whip, something like that. Our fifth wheel, Goodness, it was like, I'm not for sure because it's been a while, but it was like 12 feet plus on the tail whip on that thing. So you have your wide turn you had to make, and then still you're like, yes, I'm good. But no, you still got to watch for that tail whip after you do your wide turn. So that's when you get like, it was 42 and a half feet. Like if this was an E350 van, for instance, they keep the wheelbase the same length right here. And then they just add on to the back if it's your 15 passenger van. So you'd have more of a wide distance. I don't know, just, just all kinds of stuff to look at and think about. But uh, this, this has been a good combo as far as like the length and we can make some pretty tight turns with this thing. Oh, are those your fairies? You're watching and eating. Well, you got spaghetti? The only thing I can tolerate noodles and sauce. I've had a lot more, it's not even morning sickness, it's like all day sickness this pregnancy than with Hensley, but ironically, the only thing I wanna eat is like noodles and prego sauce. <laughs> Nothing in it. 
It doesn't have to be low sodium, but that's all I could find. <laughs> I just want like noodles and prego sauce. That's it. So that's pretty ironic. So she had me walking around the grocery store saying, it's bad enough they give you a list for me to figure out the right things to buy, but she didn't even know what she wanted. She's like, just find something I'm going to like, Nathan. What, I mean, <laughs> I don't like anything though. Like food is just like a burden these days. Like it makes me so sick. So I don't even know what I can eat. And I'm like trying to So I was taking guess. pictures. I probably took pictures of 20, 30 different things. She's like, nope. No, no, you never did. She never did like it. No, I did. said, don't worry about okay. it. I just, oh. food. <laughs> so I was just bragging about our van. Lots of bumps through here. They stocked our glass loose on our van rattling so nothing a little gorilla tape won't fix though okay should be good to go until we uh stop then i'm gonna use the gorilla like epoxy glue i've got and just glue all this but uh that's got to sit for a while so that's not gonna happen right now Oh man, it reminds me a lot of Hatcher Pass where it looks super epic, but I'm afraid it's gonna be one of those deals where we're like, oh, if we're making a top 10 for Alaska, Valdez might not make it just because we haven't got to really see it. It is so rainy and cloudy, and but oh my goodness, you can tell this is oh, so awesome. Look at that. <laughs> Brattle Bell Falls. Brattle Bell Falls, wow. Yeah. And the rain is coming down, stuff's melting. So they are coming down today, man. Pretty good stuff. It's an epic waterfall. It is. Seen. I wonder if it's always this heavy or if it's like, you know, it's raining and the glaciers are melting and... Yeah, I wonder. You can't complain about the rain and still get a super awesome waterfall because of all the rain. <laughs> Yeah, you don't think of Alaska being like rainforesty, but a lot of it kind of is. It's lush and green and mm -hmm. constant rain during certain times of the year. And, but yeah, I can't say if this is a must stop or not yet. We're gonna check it out. Um, <laughs> we've heard good things about We've heard about really Valdez, good things about though. Valdez. It is definitely off the beaten path a little bit. The roads are eh, not great. Once you get closer to town, they get a little better. Man, you can tell it's beautiful though. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we'll get to- Experience that. <laughs> hopefully we'll get to experience some of that. <laughs> but we're gonna get set up. We're gonna put our uh, RV back together. <laughs> and all that good stuff from the bumpy ride. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys later. Ready, jump. Ready, ready, jump. There you go. That's how you do it. <laughs>